I don't worry about him ever climbing. The, the, the only time I ever worried about, he took a whippery, I think he was up on uh, a coal route over there. Uh, I forget which route, but he took a whipper and they called search and rescue and he said he had like some stuff oozing out of his head and he was soloing and they were like, Ammon McNeely, are you okay? Raise your hand once, you know, they, they do the search and rescue thing and I love those guys are there. But Ammon, you know, being what he is, you know, he's like, no man, you guys go away. I'm not even bailing and he continued. He continued up and sent. And it's kind of disturbing when he tells me, you know, what was he, he said he had some white stuff coming out of his head. And I'm like, dude, that was your brain. <laughs> right? Coming out, right out of his head, man. But he continued up, cracked his helmet. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I wouldn't continue. I don't know where he gets his tenacity, but he, he, he definitely, you know, has it. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't seem like bailing is an option. No. It's just a, yeah. Bailing is not an option. I've only bailed on a couple routes with him ever, and uh, it was never him I wanted to bail. Mm -hmm. He was pissed. <laughs> yeah. Well, even on Wings of Steel, the, you know, when he and Kate were going through that thing on the ledge, and she was thinking she wanted to go down, and, you know, do you know that story, and you want to elaborate on I, their I, interaction up on the wall? I wasn't there, but I did hear about it. And uh, Kate was worried about it, you know, because she hadn't had a lot of wall experience, for, you know, and I, uh, I mean, as, as good as Kate is, you know, Ammon wanted to keep going on, get up there, and she was worried for her man, you know. I, it's different, you know, I climb with my wife sometimes, and it does bring a different dynamic into it. What about the legend of the climb? Would that that go into your thinking about being or I remember when I heard that he was going to be up there I was you know skeptical is not the right word but certainly like curious that he wanted to pick this route yeah I you know I know he had done it one other time and gone up there and, and done a couple pitches and it seemed really blank and I think that just intrigued him even more he wanted to go back and get it you know, he had the ropes up there, he was on pitch two, and he had done both variations of the pitch uh, on one. And Pete, past the pitons, top roped it, with my permission, on the rope, and was unable to even top rope the aid climb. I, I was up there on the second pitch, and I saw the, the thin flakes that he was hooking on. I'm just amazed, you know, I mean, the exfoliation up there. I mean, the, the whole route has to be different every time anybody wants to pass through that area. The, the flakes, I mean, they're, they're, <laughs> they're small and they break off from what I've seen. And you have to get up to the guys, you know, I mean, Richard, wherever he bolted, that's your next protection. And they ran it out. Do you think what Ammon did has changed the perspective of Oh, that? definitely. Definitely, yeah. I think people, uh, Wings is still what used to be like considered a, a joke climb, you know. I mean, it's on this blank face where there's nothing. For Ammon to have, you know, the, the time he had climbing up Wings of Still has definitely changed the perspective on that you know, slab of granite. You know, it goes into nothing. I mean, those guys spent their time, they carried hundreds of pounds of gear up, and they took their time. It's wall camping. I like to wall camp. They had fun. They would have had a much better time if the locals, you know, some of them, you know, most of them my buddies. They, they did things they're not proud of. Mm -hmm. And that's why they don't make it known who they were mm -hmm. as well. But, uh, we've all done things we're not proud of. I wasn't there at the time. I think Mark and Richard did a significant climb. They went up there, they, you know, they, there were no deadheads or, or uh, uh, 
there were no, uh, sorry. Bad heads? Bat heads. Ammon didn't find any signs of any bat heads. Uh, that was the rumor. I always heard these rumors about how much, how many holes they drilled, how many bolts they put in. It was run out. It's a blank section, yes. But, you know, did they force a line? No more than anybody else, really. You know, I mean, no more than 80% of the climbs on the captain. Mm -hmm. I don't think Richard and Mark would have had the same aggravation with the locals, you know, they they had back then. The gear is much better now. The safety equipment, I think people would have been a bit more intrigued. Um, let's talk a little bit more about your childhood. You guys moved around a bit as kids? A lot. A lot? <laughs> yeah. Um, how did that influence you guys? Did, you, did it make you a real tight family? And It did. You know, my best friend is Ammon, you know. He's always been my best buddy, you know. I mean, we're, we're only uh, 15 months apart. And uh, we've been best friends our whole lives. We're always a grade behind. I was, when I was in ninth, he was in eighth. And moving from town to town, you know, helped. But it also helped, uh, you know, in the diversity, you know. When you live in Houston, you know, and you meet different people in Houston or, you know, we lived in Utah. I was born in San Bernardino. We moved to Huntington Beach after my parents got divorced, you know. We moved around. It, it was always good to have the family there. And, and Ammon and I have always been the most bonded of our family, I believe. More than anybody, I, I, I would have to say. Is that a different feeling when you're climbing with your brother than with anybody else? Yeah. It's easy to get pissed off at him. <laughs> if I get pissed, you can get pissed right back, you know. <laughs> We've slugged it out numerous times in our younger days, and, and we can still slug it out when we're climbing. And uh, it's fine, man. You know, we, we, we interact in a different way than I do with any other partner, for sure. There are a few different climbs in uh, the Dixie Climb. It goes up to the Dixie in St. George is now called 5-7. Ammon used to climb that regularly. He didn't know how to protect it. Unroped. Snow Canyon, my uncle used to take us out there. We'd roll around in the sand dunes and then there, there's this buttress up there we used to climb. Uh, we'd get up that. They call that 5-6 now. We were just in our street shoes, whatever it took, but we knew we couldn't fall. I've had some close calls up there, but uh, Ammon was always up on the rock, and he taught me how to do the chimney, you know? <laughs> we were always doing that, you know? That was the most, you know, you could protect yourself in a chimney, but he was always wanting to climb up. He climbed everything in that town, everything. That's right, yeah, Ammon started, uh, you know, learning the knots and the ropes and the gear, you know, I mean, that stuff costs money, you know. We didn't grow up rich or anything. The stuff, you know, it's expensive, so. He finally, uh, the first rope climb he ever showed me, he climbed a telephone post in Huntington Beach with slings and a rope, and he protected himself, he climbed up the telephone post. <laughs> And just to explain to me how the rope works. And then uh, we went up to uh, Talk Eats and, and Suicide and we climbed uh, Who Done It. We, uh, we had 12 stoppers, three chocks, one TCU. I think it was the blue TCU because it was a small one. And uh, we had 12 quick draws and some slings. He was able to protect that. I was going up, you know, as one of my first times ever climbing. This was in the earlier 90s. I think it might have been 95, actually, mid-90s. Uh, and we went up there and sent the route, and he protected it well. I ended up doing my first lead unexpectedly. He got to a point where he had the stoppers in, you know, and, and he couldn't pull them out because we needed them for the belay. So he's like, just climb as far as you can. I traversed out onto this ledge, you know, slung a tree. And I, I'm horrified when I think back upon my protection, you know. The protection was inadequate at best, but we didn't fall. We didn't kill ourselves. 
uh, it was a good time. And we got to the top, and Ammon and I, I remember a tear, you know, I mean, I cried. I was, like, so stoked on what happened, you know. And he's like, who done it? We done it. <laughs> and that was the mantra for years. <laughs> Yeah, they did. They did. Yep. Yosemite. Oh, Evo. <laughs> the monkeys always sin, dude. I wish Evo was here today, man. I miss that, bro. <laughs> and what was the legend of the monkeys? What were they? They were doing some pretty bold stuff. The monkeys just always want to climb. And the monkeys always sin is the mantra. Because you don't bail. If you're a monkey, you don't bail. I'm not sure if I'm a monkey. I've bailed many times. <laughs> but I think I've sent more than I've bailed. you got to be smart about things, too. But uh, the monkeys, you know, I mean, the whole crew. There, there's, there's Dean, there's Evo, there's Dean, Feidelman, Mr. Bullwinkle himself. I'm not sure if they go by the monkeys anymore. They've kind of been overtaken, you know. Everybody does the monkey call now, and we don't know who our friend is. You know, that was originally the monkey call, Ooh! and we knew it was one of our friends, but the more people do it, Ooh! see, I'm not sure that's my friend. <laughs> right. Yeah, you, it used to be, it used to be, you know, that you would definitely have your buddy there, you know, when you heard that call. And, and that, it was unique, and it carries a long way, man. People tout, you know, my monkey call as being the loudest and the best, and they can hear it from. I've had several parties, you know, on different LCAP climbs. When I give the monkey call, they could hear me at the summit. <laughs> Ammons as well. We have a similar monkey call. 